split mind and lose remembrance that, that it's a dream, to forget that you're dreaming, and very much like that uh, movie Inception, if some of you saw the Leonardo DiCaprio movie Inception, where there was a, the layers and layers of dreaming, mm -hmm. and then that they would for, so much forget that they were even dreaming, and then they'd need like a kick. You know, they were so far <laughs> in the dream, they needed the kick, a simultaneous kick to really remind them to, that it all was a dream, because they would lose dreams and dreams and layers of dreams, and that's very much like this world where you lose awareness that it's a dream, and then the sickness seems to now become very physical. So for most people they would say there's two categories of sickness, there's mental illness and then there's physical illness, and that's how far the mind has forgotten it's dreaming, now it's, we're, we're into two categories. So that's why it seems very difficult to deal with what seems to be physical illness is because there's a lot of, of uh, layers that have been interposed there to forget the dreaming. So, A Course in Miracles is a teaching teaching us that all illness is mental illness and that, that health is inner peace. That's a pretty far stretch from what everyday human beings seem to experience. You know, inner peace is a definition that, that doesn't seem to have anything to do with illness and symptoms, and yet it's actually the cure way, way, way back in the mind, deep in the mind. And then, and what seems to be physical illness is just a projection onto that which is just a screen of images, and it takes on when, when, you're, when you're feeling physically ill, it's like a, a convincing job now that the body, the mind has been taught that the body feels, and so it really seems like the body is really suffering. Of course, this also fits in with the idea that, that the mind has forgotten what true vision is, and now it's got make-believe seeing, make-believe hearing, make-believe tasting, make-believe touching, make-believe smelling, all seemingly associated with the body, and none of it really uh, originating with the body at all. Those are all mechanisms of consciousness that seem to be experienced through the body. So it just makes the body more real in awareness, when you realize that only in the wrong mind are those five senses made up in, in consciousness, and then projected onto the body. So that's why we get lessons in the workbook where Jesus says, the body's eyes do not see, and the body's ears do not hear. The only way you can make sense of that is, is oh, it's a dream, and the dream characters seem to have taken on the sensations, but they aren't, aren't the source of those. It's all originating in mind. It's all originating in consciousness. Even when you have scientists studying the brain and the, the neurotransmitters and the electronical impulses and, and the peptides and on and on and on that go along with the body and hormones and all kinds of things and the brain, all of that is giving animation and giving life and really reading meaning where there is no meaning. It would be like if you, if you had a sketch when uh, Walt Disney originally made Mickey Mouse, he started off with a two-dimensional sketch of a mouse, and then the technique of repeating the image rapidly, which is what we use for photography and, and motion pictures, how motion pictures were originally made, uh, basically that, that static two-dimensional image is just repeated very rapidly, and it gives it animation. And it looks like it's alive. It, it, it can sing, it can dance, and then uh, not only did Walt invent Mickey, but he gave her a partner, Minnie, and there you go. And this is, it could have been Adam and Eve. Uh, you know, the ego did that with Adam and Eve, and, and all of the, the, the things of this world, and now we have, of course, animation with talking mouses, <laughs> and uh, you know, 
if you if you look at all the different characters, that's one of the things that animation does. It just you know we have talking plants, talking animals, talking trees. In Pocahontas, the willow tree is talking. You know everything is given animation, even things that aren't in this world thought to be animated or or alive or talking. Maybe alive, but not so much talking or or thinking. You know they're given those characteristics. And so, these same characteristics that Walt Disney used were very much what the ego did in, in the making of this world. And how far that is from reality, all of it is layers and layers upon, we talked about fantasy or imagination, but it's, the mind is completely lost in it, you know, believing in the reality of it. And reacting and responding to the images as if they're really there, and as if they're, there's something antagonistic or or frustrating or difficult about the way these characters are acting because there's an expectation that the world should be different than it is and that expectation keeps getting flushed up into awareness in terms of upset and that's what goes for uh, all kinds of issues relationship issues relation issues with the environment issues with politics issues with the the world in all kinds of ways, those are all part of this animation of reading meaning into things. So, the first two lessons of the workbook are, nothing I see means anything, and I have given everything I see all the meaning it has for me. If you are going to, if you are a loving presence that wanted to free the mind from this image making, and from this idolatry, and from this sense of making something out of nothing, and then feeling guilty about the, the something, then those are two good lessons to start off with. Nothing I see means anything, and I have given everything I see all the meaning it has for me. Uh, you were asking too about, should I do the workbook lessons again? Yes. You could see those early lessons, it's, all it takes is getting any lesson completely and thoroughly, and it will transfer to the whole world. So. The lessons are not meant to be cumulative, like when we take lessons in school, it's meant to be cumulative learning. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't go and take your calculus until you get your algebra. And you don't, you know, take your algebra, you know, until you get your basic, you know, mathematics. You've got to have your multiplication tables and multiplying, dividing, and of course, dividing <coughs> subtracting you. It's building blocks. And it's the same way with all of the, the different um, philosophies and genres and, and specifics of the world, it's all based on cumulative learning. And A Course in Miracles is not based on cumulative learning. It's saying if you can just get it completely w once, it will transfer to everyone and everything. So you, it could be that you hang with it and feel guided to repeat the lessons, uh, it could be you, rep you could repeat them a number of times, but ultimately you want to keep in mind that that it's all about transfer of training, and it's not about cumulative learning. So you you can tell yourself you're gaining every time you do the workbook lessons, but this course will be believed entirely or not at all, and it either transfers to everything or it hasn't transferred. And so it's not like. Uh, like some of these games, horseshoes, where you get points, <laughs> charts, <laughs> you get points for coming closer to the ring or to the pin. That's not how this kind of healing works. You just have to hang in with it. So in terms of sickness, it's like really, you always want to be reminded that, that it's perception that is distorted in dreams and, and through the sleeping mind, the deceived mind, and it's healed perception is what the healing is. Healing is not the removal of symptoms, even though in this world that's exactly what you're aiming for, and it's a, it's a good outcome if you remove the symptoms, remove the pain, remove the suffering, remove the disease, remove the difficulty. If the eyes, for example, if there was a, a, a problem with the eyes or a problem with seeing, and you went to a doctor and, and they helped you work either to correct the vision or to surgically 
repair something like a detached retina or so on and so forth, then that would be healing in this world, would be getting sight back. But remember, Jesus is telling us the body's eyes do not see. So you're repairing something that can't see in the first place. So how can that be healing if, if you return sight to something that never could see in the first place? Uh, some of you remember the the Matrix movie where Neo's laying there on the table and Morpheus and Trinity are over him with all those pins, like, like a lot of mega acupressure, acupuncture going on with all the pins coming out and he says, why do my eyes hurt? And Morpheus says, because you've never used them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> with that metaphor that he was, he was just in a place where his body was being, you know, the energy from the body was being taken out, but he wasn't really being used, you know, for seeing. And you might say that, that until you get into, back into spiritual vision, then you really don't know what seeing is. You might say that this whole world is like, is like being in the dark, walking around and being in the dark. And when Jesus says in the Course, I am determined to see, or above all else, I am determined to see things differently, he's, he's pointing towards spiritual vision, which is more like w w wisdom, the wisdom of this inner light than, than anything else. It has nothing to do with the body's eyes. It's not like you really do all your forgiveness lessons and you go, you know, for your testing and you, ah, 2020, ha, I did it. <laughs> The vision of Christ. I can see bodies now with 2020. No, that's not it. <laughs> that's not the end. So, this is all part of mind training to start to see everything in terms of how you feel. Your state of mind and how you feel is a way of determining how well you are. The more consistently you experience inner peace, it is saying that you're on the, on the road to true healing is healing of mind. And more and more you learn uh, not to take it seriously, not to read meaning into the forms. And um, anytime you read meaning into the forms, you will, again, you'll be blocked from true healing because again, cracked perception or broken perception or fragmented perception is the sickness. And healing, then, in that category, is wholeness. So, what you're going for is wholeness of mind, that's what healing is, and cracked or fragmented perception is what the sickness is. So, you can see it's a whole different way of looking at things, it's a whole different way of defining health and sickness, and it does take a lot of mind training and a lot of practice to take your mind up into that. And that's why we have a Course in Miracles, that's why we have workbook lessons. We go deeper and deeper into the training to train your mind based on how it feels. To use how you feel as like the barometer, and instead of a thermometer to measure your temperature of your body, you're using your feelings as your barometer to how well you're tuning into the Holy Spirit in terms of wellness. So that's kind of a synopsis of, of that. It takes a lot of mind training to go along that journey. But it's worth it. That's what the whole thing is for.